computer startup. Hi, this video is much longer than I expected. It is close to 50 minutes. But I think, yeah, that's the time to show you everything I wanted to show you. I put uh, an easy navigation into the description so that you can easy navigate to the relevant sections you want to. And in advance, I would say thanks for watching. So let's start. Hi, this video is about manual prompt engineering. And for that, we are going to use the Watson X Prompt Lab. And when we are going to use the Watson X Prompt Lab, for sure, we need to set up a project for that. And then we are going to inspect different possibilities. I call it here prompt structures, how to interact with a model using prompts. And therefore, there's a possibility which is called chat, structured and freeform. So we will see what that is. And we will have an initial automation in that context because I like automation. And the reason for that is, as you can see, I wrote that in my blog post here. Why? Yeah, the, here's about streamlining automation. And here I wrote a little bit about how the manual prompt engineering can work inside the Watson X prompt lab. And that is what we are going to do. We are going to discover the three major, I call it prompt structures here. And that is what the video is about. And let's start with set up the project. Let's start with set up a project. I start with IBM Cloud. And maybe you ask yourself, oh, why IBM Cloud? I want to use the Watson X here, the prompt lab. Why I do start here, I show you in a blog post I created related to add users to Watson Stu uh, X Studio, uh, Watson uh, X project. And the reason for that is you need a little bit to understand there is IBM Cloud with the services and you have the IBM data platform. And we are using IBM Cloud services for working in the IBM data platform. And here we have Watson X, Project, and um, a Prompt Lab. The related services are uh, Watson Studio, machine learning, and uh, object storage. And the Watson Studio is the ending point for the different other kinds of services related to a project because a project is normally uh, created in a Watson Studio. As, um, and that is then the single point of entry for different kinds of resources related to AI topics also in the past. And that's the same situation. And now let us start here from IBM Cloud. So uh, going to what's next. So when I go to what's next, and you can see here that the URL will change. You can see now we are in the data platform and no longer as we see here in IBM Cloud. So, and you can take a tour. Sure, we will do that, not at the moment. And here we see that is the UI when we are going to start to be in what's next. So now we are in what's next. You can also see here that we have what's next and there's um, IBM Cloud Pack for data. Few you can use. Here is the region where we have the services. And what we are going to do now, we want to work with um, the with the uh, prompt lab. And to do that, at the moment we see we have no project we can really start with. And 
To do that, we need to go into the IBM cloud. Yeah. Or maybe we can here also create a sandbox, but I don't want to uh, create a sandbox here and a sandbox project. I want to do that manually. And for that, we're going back and we create the service, the resource check, which is called Watson Studio. As I said, you can also do this in a different way, but I want to show you the different dependencies and that is the reason why I do that. And I want to <laughs> show you that you save money. Um, the, uh, the Sandbox project is always also created with the free services and the light plan. That means uh, when you try out what we are going to do, you will not pay for that even when you, uh, yeah, for sure you have to insert the credit card when you use the IBM cloud here but uh, there is nothing you have to pay you can see that uh, pricing is free is a light plan for sure after 30 days of in inactivity everything will be deleted so that's fair uh, just for trying out and th that that's okay I will place that in Frankfurt region so at the moment we are also in the Frankfurt region here so that we can see and now I like uh, prefixes and postfixes, yeah, to under, to see what I have created, what I had on a, yeah, what I had under control, or what I have under control. So let's see. That's the what's next. We will go. We will create that in that resource group. I have only one resource group at the moment in my. Uh, cloud account. Okay. And with that, I will create that. So now we can see we have two options. Now we can launch that service inside what's next or a cloud pack for data so we already did that here so but now we are going to create uh, a launch it in what's next so that is once again the same ap uh, appearance yeah can uh, we can delete that and now we have here also the projects entry as you remember we we didn't have that example in uh, not that entry in the first try. Now we have that because we have that service. And now we will uh, create uh, a project. Uh, see, yeah, we are here and we create a project. So now that now we have all project that empty create a project and we call that here um, prompt lab example so prompt lab example and now you see what I what I said now we need to add an add next service which is called storage and the storage service so when we go here now we, we create first the watson studio and now we're going to create a object store cloud object storage so that we that the studio can save somewhere the data which is uh, given here there is also a lot <laughs> There was the light plan, so it's going to uh, uh, to be de deprecated as far as I see. <laughs> yes, uh, uh, offers a, uh, a monthly charge includes capability allows you. Yeah, so so we can also inspect uh, uh, the the pricing for the future. It will be deprecated, uh, or is it already deprecated? Let let us see. 
pricing region, uh, smart tier. So I need to verify that. So the light plane at the moment, <laughs> uh, light plane is deprecated. Let's see what it happens when I create that. <laughs> so uh, it is still available to see to select. What what happens when I do that? <laughs> so uh, the name. What's next? Object storage here. So So I go to the go back to my project the add oh, sorry I need to refresh here now here we have that starch so let's see how we see what it will cost so and the next is um, we create that after the creation of that project we are very close to uh, create some prompts and as you can see now when we created the project we have here different kinds of tabs and information we can use we can collaborate the, the project has the objective that ai engineers or ai specialty uh, um, data scientists can work together and we can call and then they can collaborate here exchange data exchange prompts and and so on here the assets will be listed here and we are going to manage integrations to other services here and we will see that we need to create an additional service in a few moments for the um to run the prompt lab we need also to create the watson um, machine learning service in that context so let's see what happens so let me see that is at the moment not generated we're going back to the and we uh, do the overview and we want to open the prompt lab and now you can see uh, what i said no watch and machine learning service detected you must add a what's machine learning service for that so and now we're going to associate a service and we when you are going to associate a service we see that <laughs> i have no service at the moment for that i create a new one watson machine watson machine learning service Huh, here is the, <laughs> the free one. <laughs> it's not deprecated. And here the Watson X. So and with that we are ready to go. And then we have set up the project. Okay, now we're going to associate it. And you can see now the project as a short remember, you can see that is all related at the end here in the project with that service, what we, what we have seen. And now we are ready to go. Yeah, go up and now open up the prompt lab so i will skip the tour you can take the tour for sure and um, then it's time 
to inspect what are these three prompt structures inside the prompt lab. So now let us dive into three possibilities for prompt structures in the What's Next prompt lab. Here we are directly in the What's Next prompt lab. That's the UI. We have here the three possibilities to structures the prompt. And let us take a look first of all where we can find how the prompt is written. Here is the information of the prompt. And as we can see here at the moment, that is the system prompt. It's called system prompt. And you can change that kind of prompt to starting to interact here. That means here you can define the initial definition for that. Uh, I will not do that. It's just like uh, that you see, okay, that can be changed. And then you can have here an interaction. And you have also some examples, but be uh, a little bit careful by using the examples. But, but with the quick start examples, it will change the model. And maybe you are surprised when you uh, click that. Uh, please insert here the, the text you want to um, use to get the information out, what the model does when you interact here. So that uh, is what I wanted to give you the as a short overview here. That is the prompt. You can change the prompt here for the prompt engineering and you can change the model here. And yeah, you can select the model based on different criteria you want to chat. Yeah, so the um, chat is pre-selected as a filter. So, and when we would remove that, we see some uh, some more, but we will use the, the chat model here and select it. And then we can interact here with the, uh, with the model directly. So the objective is to find out if it if the model card information you have seen what is already given what does that model so i just as a reminder back so when we when we here when we select that model we have the model information if you do not find the information already here what the objective of the model is uh, what does it fulfill we can double check here the uh, interaction does it work in a in a chat situation? How does it uh, uh, feels like uh, to interact with? And we can also see directly in in that view here the information what is sent maybe with curl. Yeah, you can see the programming uh, interface possibilities to access the model when you're not inside that environment. So that is what is sent. And you can see that the information which is, which is here is a part here inside as an input of uh, that model. Okay, based on that, we are uh, ready for the first interaction. Oh, no, hold the horses. I see also here this uh, the, the options, yeah, the options to interact with the model. So that will be for the same for all the others also is when we are going to interact with a model, we have model parameters and the model parameters reflect in greedy means really give me the best possibility, the best probability of an answer. So at the end, uh, uh, what the model providing is a statistical answer. So what is the the best one? So that is what we want to achieve when we say greedy. When we say sampling, then uh, we want to configure the model. It should be answer based on the information we provide more flexible. That could be like in a situation when you want to create some kind of mails and you want that not each mail would la uh, look like same for uh, different persons and that is a possibility or maybe uh, when you're going to write um, um, fairy tale <laughs> yeah from different perspectives so to see different ideas and that is a little bit different so and um, that is what is about the major 
yeah the, the the decision the major decision how to work with that content yeah or better better to say with that content in uh in the model that the parameter and then uh is it allowed to repeat information which is already given in the prompt uh because sometimes maybe you want to avoid that it just repeats what's there uh, but you also want not totally uh, to avoid it because you know uh, in a situation if you're going to interact maybe an information which was provided before when you have a chat situation so then it makes sense just to reuse it then that is the reason why it's very often used with that one at the moment we have no stopping criteria that we will be uh, or will be more interesting if the if we take a look at the structured and free form so and now uh, let us just have a an, an short interaction and say maybe um, here what is the, uh, we can also see here what is the <laughs> uh, granite model from IBM <laughs> okay let's see and then we get an answer and you can see here that answer is now included here as um, assistant information so that is marked with the information assistant so that was here the the user input yeah that is the structure what we have here we can copy that for example and uh, inspect that maybe in a text editor i have here also opened the uh, uh, visual studio code and you can see here we have uh, the information from the system then we what the user input is and that was the assistant answer and that is how it works with um um, within chat. So now we can move on to the next part. So here we have some kind of um, ability to change the prompt. We can, the, because at, at the end, the prompt is the entire text, what we see here. And here we uh, can also uh, edit the kind of instruction we will see what that we will be later so the, the system information and um, here we will uh, contribute to the user information so that is what we have here okay it's time to move on we move on to the structured one uh, as you can see here the structured one is organized in the setup and try and this setup of the the prompt has two sections which call which one is called instruction and the next one is called examples and what does that mean we will take a look into an example you can see here there are several uh, areas where large language model generative AI can be used for example also in question answering and when we just select that so we see that the um, prompt the structured prompt is pre-structured and filled out with an example you can see that is the text which is related to that uh, the full prompt information and now we can take a look what the instruction is the instruction is answer the following in question only uh, information from the article yeah using only information from the article that is the article and if there is no answer in the article say i don't know okay and here we have examples that is called few shots so we provide some kind of examples to the to the user uh, not the user to the to the model <laughs> so to the model so how uh when it creates an answer how the answer can look like and learn from the from that examples and that is our question and uh, we can see how the model answers when we use here the full blown uh, prompt 
and uh, it works. It takes information from the article, yeah, and gives an answer which fits to that. So that is everything fine. With uh, when we have some examples that is called for exam, uh, not called for example, that is called a uh, few shot prompting. Yeah. So we provide some examples, some shots, some examples, what is already given. And when uh, we remove the, these uh, examples, we are going to have a one shot or maybe a zero shot prompting. And zero shot means, okay, it is just without any example, but it can have instructions. And not only here, yeah, the text, what we, what we have. Yeah, so, and with that, we can uh, send the information again and see what happens. Uh, clear the output, what happens when we do that. We see it's a little bit different, but it still works. Yeah, it has still the article, so that that is uh, okay. A little bit changed. Um, I guess it can also be reproduced. It will be the same, so as we said with the greedy. And now let's see what uh, happens when we remove here. Now we come to the stopping criteria. That means when we remove the stopping criteria, if the output, and that is what is generated, is the output stops um, really here, or is it only stopped because of the stopping criteria? So let's see when we clear the output and start again. Yeah, it stops. That That's okay. That seems uh, good. That is solid. And then we also remove the article information so that you cannot use the what is instructed here as the as input for the answer then it should answer i don't know and maybe it will answer more information this kind of uh yeah when we um, saying hallucinate some ad additional information with that model uh, and, uh, here we use at the moment the the llama model instruct and yeah that also works. And when we also remove that here, so we can see, and then we can see, okay, it creates more information than we need. And when we now in turn here, a stopping criteria, the stop sequence, so that means that we, that we say it should uh, stop after uh the retain word because we expect that the answer will be the same um when we send that prompt to the mod because we use that so we will not have any uh, big variance for that con uh, for that uh, situation so that is uh, also very important that you have uh when you are going to interact with the model with the prompting that you have the right examples, yeah, and all the right testing data so that you know what you're doing, what you insert for that. And now we start and now we can see we stop uh, after retain and uh, not the rest is shown. So everything works as expected and now we can also reduce the max of tokens that means when we're now going to interact with the model and we reduce the token the token is not a, a word it can be yeah a bun bunch uh, maybe a bunch of word or a number it depends on the on the on the model itself how the tokenizing is implemented and uh, the reason for that it, it that it gets in, into packages which uh, getting in uh, converted into array numbers and uh, that will be uh, sent to a vector database and that can be easier be used to um, identify what could be yeah the next token yeah the next combination on information okay so now i just uh, change it to 10 I clear the output and then let's see what it happens so 10 token that means okay that is still here in the 10 tokens 
And let me see what is what is with five token cleared out. Okay, then you can see here the then the, the other words are no longer in that tokens. Yeah, with that now in mind, I want to show you the next step with the free form, which gives you the freedom to define your own um, structure for your problem fully. So as as, uh, as you have seen, the starting with the system, now with the structure, we have here the instructions, the examples here, that is a little bit guided, guided, yeah. And then you are totally free as an input for that free form. We start again uh, with that example and we just copy and paste that to the uh, free form. So, and when we put that to the free form, we can see that uh, will create the same answer when we use the same parameter as it should have in the structure because it will be sent to the model. Yeah. And to the, yeah, in what's next. So, and you can see that, uh, that are the parameters. So that are the parameters and we have here one as a parameter and what we also should insert here i guess it was the stop sequence of uh, two carriages uh, carriage returns let me see here that is exactly the same so that uh, keep in mind when you change here also the options and the model can change so that means the the model configuration is bounded to the selection you have for your prompt yeah what you're going to do so here uh, we have that and you can see this model works better when you provide at least one example so just as a reminder in uh, in the structure that we already had provided at the beginning directly examples and you can see uh, now we have the same configuration can put here the, uh, the cursor and that is exactly where it, where it will start with generation of uh, the answer so that is what we see here okay it's okay we, we need to insert that here to have the same starting point yeah? and when we now do that and we say generate hopefully <laughs> uh, it should have the same outcome and it has the same outcome so we can go here and we can go here as so we did everything right because nothing should change because the same information the same prompt with the same model configuration should result in the same answer when we use greedy yeah that is um how it works what I want to show you and uh, uh, introduce when you do that um, more uh, this manual editing and, and writing and now we have the ability to totally be free uh, changing the structure at uh, specific uh, um, instructions maybe also writing instructions just before here and have a totally different outline um when you use that freedom you also want not to copy to and paste too much and maybe also uh, already in the structure so there is a possibility inside um the studio what's next studio insert variables so now we can say for example that is a variable which is uh, the question yeah? we want to send. So, and now we can just uh, just uh, we can just replace that information. Maybe we will have a list later on. Yeah, when we move on. 
uh, of questions and the context of the article information in our situation would be the same or we will also insert a variable to replace that to be here flexible so we can do that and it will still uh, have the same outcome yeah because now it inserts here the information and we can see here the text now um, we can move on to the next topic yeah because we have also introduced now the the variables and in a moment when you are in a very uh, with the variables you are very close also to do some kind of automation and the cool stuff with uh, the what's um, x prompt lab environment you can directly save that prompt also as um Jupyter notebook but first of all we will save that as a um, prompt template we can say that is here um, prompt uh, tem uh, plate example yeah so that we can use that example anytime and what is also a good that you can say okay not an autosave so that we can ensure that that configuration is always available when we're just clicking it here so but now as i said with the of that i want to save it also as a jupyter notebook and see the some kind of implementation so now we use that as a notebook and then we can say that is a, the notebook example and the notebook example is now when we are going to when you're going to save we can see that in the assets it's not here because it's not what we can directly load into that uh, prompt lab environment we will execute it because that contains code and when we now go to the prompt lab example project here into the assets we see here the example and for those of you who do not know the jupyter notebook the cool thing with a jupyter notebook is that you can combine um, definitions informations and code and the outcome and that is uh, usually used in the uh, but oh, it's usually used by AI engineers, yeah, because that is very good to, so that everyone can understand what happens here. Then we have a part of code, and then you later I will see the result here uh, when an output is given, and that that is um, very useful in that case. So we can just going starting to execute it for just for example, it will not totally run because I need to insert an API key. I currently don't. Uh, uh have that key i need to create it i don't want to do that at the moment and then um i can execute it i want to show you all about the initial structure of that and that is the reason why i showed it yeah, that because i don't i don't like <laughs> to execute or manual all that steps because what you have seen before yeah at the end it is a lot of copy and paste and you have the parts of the instructions mostly what you are going to change and uh, the rest if you do have a lot of more examples it's not to be um yeah to be changed and uh, environment for doing really a lot of testing and that is more a part of the automation and then one uh, automation can be using a Jupyter notebook here directly inside that Watson X environment with a Jupyter notebook and now we're going to start that as you can see that is like here uh, markdown shown as the text and now we see here it will be executed uh what i can insert so that i uh it's not that's not given that is that is a function that will not show anything at the moment or that is just 
like that is loaded here and now we going to define a variable and show um, uh, and assign them a value here can we say for example a print yeah just so that you can see that I can insert the model variable and print the variable out yeah but it's loaded so that you can see also the the result is directly shown here so ah print <laughs> print <laughs> I should use print so now here the model name you can see now we're going to define that the parameters you can see that are the parameters which we used then there are specific information how to access uh, the um, API, REST API, uh, uh, from here Watson X to get the model, uh, to, to generate a model answer. Then we have some additional defining with the model object. Uh, that means when we are going to send information later on, how that is everything is given. So here we need the credentials so that, that we will not have. And that is the reason why it will not work. Uh, because we will not enter any uh, additional information here. So, and then moving on, we can see here that is the variable and maybe here we are going to uh, load some information from a spreadsheet or other data resources we can insert or even we can change the model input here. That is That is also so. And then after that preparation we send that to the model but that will not work because we are not authorized why because we have no um key for that so that is what i wanted also to show you as a as a, as a starting point and when we going back to the presentation that was an initial kind of automation what we have here and yeah that is the uh, environment you can have with um, the prompt lab and yeah it provides you um, a wide range of interacting handling the prompts doing that model in the uh, manual interaction at the at, at the first time and uh, yeah i hope that was useful for you it was very long yeah uh, longer than i <laughs> expect it and um, try it out have fun with it and uh, let's see what will be in the next video okay goodbye